Welcome to our studio in Bailey Heads, uh, which is on the Gold Coast in Queensland. Um, it, uh, the story that follows is the restoration of this telescope, which was made probably about 160 years ago. Um, it's really interesting to see that it comes from a different era and the quality of the uh, engineering work is absolutely astounding. Um, you can see here when I'm just twisting this little thing around that is the equatorial mount of this telescope uh, which had unfortunately been left out in the rain for a, quite a long time. Now uh, if you're at all interested in restoration and conservation um, we uh, would ask you to visit our website. Um, on there we have uh, lots of videos and um, ebooks um, covering uh, restoration um, techniques, the traditional res restoration techniques, which m you may find interesting. But until then, we do hope that you'll enjoy what follows. Um, I really enjoyed this project and was privileged to be able to do it. This is the uh, wooden tripod, and as you can see, there are lots of bits. Um, and when you do the restoration, it's important that you number which uh, bit goes where. Otherwise, when you come to assemble it, you may find that some parts don't actually fit as they ought. Um, they, I'll just show you the base of these um, legs. There's really nice brass protection at the end there. Isn't that nice? But they're going to need quite a bit of um, restoration work. Um, you can probably see from here, the uh, it's been left out in the rain, which is a great shame, but there you go. Um, uh, a lot of the glue has actually come apart, but this will have been uh, stuck with animal glue or high glue, um, which is water soluble. And fortunately, um, it's very easily um, uh, re adhered afterwards. I'll be using the uh, animal glue as well. Um, there are some restoration jobs done on it, like, like here, you probably see. And unfortunately, it's this ubiquitous araldite, which is a great shame because it's very difficult to get these joints apart um, and to clean them up afterwards. But they will come apart um, and we'll be able to fix those too. Um, just um, to show a few details, um, these are the connecting um, uh, pieces, which are made from brass. Um, and these, of course, fit in there and hold the um, whole structure together. But uh, look at the attention to detail. This little curve, this cove moulding on them. And of course those things they're used to, um, there's a little, uh, there would have been a special tool which fits into those and then you can turn it around and tighten them. Um, but during its, its life um, it appears to have lost a few and uh, somebody's made nice little um, aluminium ones which we will uh, may, maybe replace, I don't know, I'll speak to the client. Um, this is also another replacement here where um, the, uh, it's been made out of a um, plywood. Um, but there you go, plywood is probably a good solution here because, um, because of the grain direction. Um, it needs to be held strongly and grain will crack along the long grain, whereas when you have plywood like that you've got long grain and short grain and they will hold together and they're going to be pretty sound. But that, is, that isn't original. Nice little brass fitting there. There are another couple of details which I missed earlier and that is um, how does it fit onto the, um, that assembly there, that top piece? Well, it fits on with this, these here. Now, um, these are replacements. You can probably see these have been replaced with plywood, which is not too bad, but it'd be nice if it was uh, the, the, uh, the proper wood. So they fit on the inside of here. I'll just undo that. So these pads will fit in there like that, and they should be glued in place. Um, and then these provide the bearing surface onto the, uh, the telescope mount um, and they're held in place with these. So these are just larger scaled versions of um, the, the smaller ones. 
Let's put them back together again. So to start the restoration work, I'll be taking these uh, legs apart individually and I'll make a note of where each piece fits. Um, it'll be quite interesting to have a look at these screws. It's often from these screws it can help you date the, um, the, uh, the, the work. Um, so these are brass screws. Let me just take them and do this one. Now those are pretty early screws. These are pretty early machine made screws. Um, they're brass. You can tell there's just a slight point on the end of them, but there's no guarantee all of them will be the same. And it's possible that as we progress through the restoration, there may be older screws. Um, these screws look as though they're about 1860-ish, um, uh, between 1860, say, and about 1890. Uh, so we'll, we'll see soon. Now, it's important with screws like this let you know where they went because they're not all the same um, and if you put screws into a uh, another slot a slot which wasn't made for them you'll find that the thread will be different um, and uh, that's not good because it's not going to hold so the thing to do is to make a drawing of where it actually came from so what I'm going to do is just do a, just a stylized drawing of the, the base there's the um, the bottom, and I'll just say bot on there, um, and um, I'll actually put the screw in its location on this piece of paper. And I'll also look and see what what leg piece this is, and back there I'll see I've already put a number three, so I'll put the leg number three there, like that. So that's quite interesting. Interestingly, um, these pads, which form the, mount, um, the bearing surface for the uh, brass mount on the legs, are made from ro uh, rosewood. And I've scraped it there and you can smell the smell of rosewood. Rosewood is uh, really an oily wood and perfect for a bearing surface. I'm just having a look to see uh, the condition of the telescope in the case um, and try and assess what needs to be done. You can see there the, uh, the brass needs to be completely stripped back to the brass and polished. Uh, the case will have to come apart and uh, be repolished. Oh, and there's an escutcheon to be made too for it. really nice thing. Quite looking forward to seeing what it looks like when it's finished. And there we are. There's a closer look at the brass. And the inside of the uh, the box. It's got uh, wood wasps in it, or had wood wa wasps in it. And it looks as though it's been out in the rain for quite a while. So here I am um, about to stain the, uh, the legs, which I've cleaned up and I've actually bleached with oxalic acid. Um, the stain I'm using is Van Dyke Brown, which is in water. And the uh, thing I've just poured in is, is methyl spirits and that reduces the surface tension and allows the stain to bite deeply into the uh, into the wood. So it's just speed it up. So the advantage of using um, water-based stains is they won't do any damage and they can be taken off at any any point in the future. When you're doing restoration, that's one of the things you really ought to bear in mind, that you don't do anything that can't be reversed down the track. When you think this is probably 160 years old, or thereabouts, um, there's been a few owners through its lifetime, and hopefully there'll be a few more owners. 
So you put the stain on using the brush as I have there um, and then just wipe it off and that'll give you an even coat. Once the stain has uh, dried, um, I'll give it a coat of oil. And in this case, I'm going to use tongue oil. And you'll see here I've mixed up some tongue oil. And that'll wet the wood surface. And it's a remarkable sealer as well. And very, very durable. Uh, the big secret to using tongue oil is to make sure that the wood surface is actually very smooth and has a sheen before you put the stuff on. Um, and not to rely on the tongue oil to give the finish um, whilst it's wet. Here I am rushing around, assembling the legs, and the brass is being sorted too. Adjusting my son. It's quite a satisfying moment to put the, uh, the wood together. And there it is, the preliminary um, assembly, um, pending some further work. Now, that's quite interesting. You can see the screw there, and that's the uh, turret on which the telescope will fit. It's very finely engineered. You can see there the wood wasps have got in. Um, and that's the mechanism that is used to actually rotate the telescope on its pedestal. Um, there's also a taper bearing there too. So now this is the um, brass after it's been cleaned. And uh, the telescope's to go back together. That's the box. Again, you can see that uh, everything's coming apart. There's a lot of broken dovetails. So I'll carefully take the, um, the case apart shortly and I'll clean it all up. Um, and all the staining you see there can be removed with oxalic acid. The uh, black stains you see are caused by uh, water uh, reacting with the, um, the um, steel screws. There's the scutcheon hole. It will have to be, be sorted. So you can see there where the rain has more, wet the um, screws and stained wood. Now this is uh, quite a good tip to get screws. These screws have not been out um, and they are really securely uh, fixed in there. So you have a soldering iron and the end of the soldering iron has been turned into a um, screwdriver. And whilst the the uh, screw is wet, <laughs> sorry, whilst the screw is um, warm, um, it's, it can be undone quite easily. So the idea is to put all the screws back again where they came out, where possible. And not to do any damage. Now here I'm using uh, methylated spirits to assist the... Uh, um, the breaking down of the glue, which is crystallized. You can see there, uh, it runs very easily um, and it enables the joints to be easily knocked apart. The big secret is to make sure that it really does get wet and the methylated spirits will penetrate really easily. Fortunately, most of the dovetails are in reasonable order, but uh, there's a few broken. And unfortunately, um, araldite, which is an epoxy resin, has been used in some places, which means um, um, it gives of death to the, uh, to the dovetails, because um, they will get so um, stuck in place that removing the glue will break them. Just a word to the wise, um, whoever does restoration, don't use epoxy resin. Try and keep the, uh, the glues you use to water-soluble glues that can be dissolved um, sometime down the track.
ideally use uh, animal glue, which is also known as pearl glue. Uh, but um, the uh, uh, white glue um, can be used as well, which is water soluble, but not the cross linking type. Just a little bit more May the Lady Spirit. Sometimes the little bits come apart um, and it's important to keep all of these pieces because they can be reattached um, later. You can see there the, um, those dovetails are broken on the top of that piece and they'll be repaired. Also interesting to note that it's really important that you number all of the pieces as you take them apart to make sure they all go back together again as they were uh, originally. So this is the box apart. And it does look a bit of a mess. You can see the water staining. That's the uh, the base now. That's the underside of the box. So a little tip here, um, when you put screws in, um, it's important that they're not in too tight, particularly if you're using brass screws. Um, now, I've had to plug up some of the holes using little strips of wood and gluing them in place. So I have to drill them out again to provide a, a pilot hole for the brass screw. Two ways of doing this. You can do it as I've done it, or alternatively uh, put a, a steel screw in first, followed by a brass screw. And also you need a little bit of lubricant. Now this is a microcrystalline wax. that I make up myself. You can see all the old slotted screws there. Now this is the uh, box going back together again and it's important that it all lines up properly. Wouldn't do for one the underside to be slightly out of true. So this is after it's been cleaned up and the, um, uh, the staining removed. And I'm just putting a little bit of the um, bays in place. You can see the escutcheon plate I've made there that's ready to go in. Now I'm putting it in using uh, animal glue or as is also known hide glue or even pearl glue. It's the same meaning. It's an um, animal product and it's a protein so it gels. when You, you use it whilst it's uh, warm and then it'll gel when it gets uh, cold. It's a really really useful glue to use particularly for putting brass in. Um, it's more effective really than any other glue, including the dreaded araldite. So again here now I'm taking the, uh, I've been careful to keep all of those screws in order. Those are the screws that came out of the the original holes, they're in the same place they ought to be in. So I'm careful now to lay them all out so I get them all back in again properly. And you can see there that's the lubricant that I use. And this uh, helps the screws to go in. All the hinges are going back in exactly the same way as uh, they came out. Um, I've been careful to number the uh, faces of the uh, hinges so that they go back in the same slot they came out of.
Incidentally, the base is uh, English billiard table base. Um, it has a really nice texture, um, and that was put on using uh, the animal glue. Uh, as I said before, the property, one of the properties of the animal glue is that it uh, it gels. Um, so whilst it's still warm, that's when you put the uh, base in place, push it in carefully into the glue, um, and then it'll and then allow it to uh, take its shape and it'll stick. That's the other property of uh, animal glue. It really is very sticky. So there I am lining the screws up. Now there, there's the telescope as it ought to have been. It, just out of a point of interest, the box had actually shrunk um, about three sixteenths of three sixteenths of an inch across its, uh, its its thickness there. So all of that had to be adjusted. And this is the telescope itself, and that's the mechanism for um, inclination. It is so impressive. And there's the telescope. Very, very interesting project to have done. So there you are, there's the finished box with the telescope in it. If you're at all interested in uh, restoration and conservation techniques, traditional ones, uh, please get in touch with us. We've got quite a few practical ebooks and video modules which will fast track you on your way.